Okay, so for the sake of making this video as, as um, short as possible, um, I'm not going to show you how to take it apart because I've detailed that in another video uh, on my channel. So you may want to check back um, on the previous videos that I have um, uploaded. Anyway, so you have this situation. Your shutter is open, your mirror is stuck up. Um, obviously, you're pressing the release, the shutter release button and nothing's happening. Um, it won't wind on, it's completely stuck. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, okay, is try to um, close the second shutter and bring the mirror back down. Now, this can be done by a very, very small white tap. Just, just underneath this brass screw, there is a white pin and what you need to do is you need to get a small screwdriver and push the white pin this way. So if we could just get under there, I don't know if you can see it, probably not. But I push the white pin there. And this brings the shutter curtain across and it brings the mirror back down. Now you should at this point be able to advance the wind crank forward. If you can't, you can push this pin in here and you can get it going and it will uh, unlock itself and allow you to, to crank the camera on. Now, you, you may find that your camera is quite happy to open the shutter when you press the shutter release button. This would indicate that this solenoid here, or electromagnet, is working um, because the process kind of goes like this. If the battery is installed, in my case it's not because I'm working on this camera for someone, um, then what will happen is you will press this shutter release button and it will um, energize this electromagnet, which will effectively um, open the shutter curtain and bring the mirror up. I will do this manually now with this lever. So the shutter is open and the mirror is up. Now the exposure time is dependent on the position of this variable resistor here, which is coupled to your lens and of course your, your shutter speed here. So after a period of exposure time, a second pulse will arrive at a solenoid just underneath this plate. And that solenoid will push this white pin across and finish the cycle of closing uh, the shutter and bringing the mirror back down simultaneously. So you should now be able to wind the camera on again. And you can see the, the, all the potential energy which is um, um, built up here. Uh, which will be released by uh, the energize, energizing of this electromagnet again when you press the shutter. In my case, I've got no battery, so um, I'm doing it manually. Again, the shutter is uh, open and the mirror is up. And now, again, we wait for the second pulse to come along to activate the solenoid, which closes the mirror and shutter after uh, a given amount of exposure time. So, the fault with this camera is... Okay, when I wind it on and I press the shutter, um, yep, the shutter opens, no problem at all. Uh, this is working from the battery. This indicates that all of this side, the shutter, um, the crank and the shutter opening side uh, is actually working. So all of this mechanism here uh, and this electromagnet is working fine. However, my second pulse is either not arriving at the solenoid or the solenoid is, um, it's, it's not working. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly whip it apart, show you inside and show you how to uh, independently test the, um, the, 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 uh, the solenoid. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to simulate winding the camera on as we would normally. So this cranks the first curtain over. Uh, when we press the shutter release button on the camera, uh, the, the first electromagnet is activated and uh, that opens the shutter. If you remember the, uh, this mechanism here, which is coupled by this gear and this gear to this secondary part, um, this controls the opening of the shutter and uh, it also brings the mirror up, uh, this first electromagnet. So then what we're waiting for is our exposure time to pass and then a pulse, as we said earlier, to come and activate this uh, solenoid. Now, 
I'm not going to use the pin to manually activate it this time. I want to test to see if the solenoid's working. So what I'm going to do is I've got a six volt battery here in a holder. Um, and I'm going to uh, place the negative side of the battery on this uh, corner uh, terminal here. And I am going to use the other side to manually attempt to activate the solenoid. Uh, I'm going to connect that to the brown wire here. And there we go. So the, um, the solenoid is actually working because I've applied six volts uh, plus six volts across uh, the brown and white wire, okay? Plus voltage on the brown, okay? Negative voltage on the white. However, I've used this pin because it's um, it's connected to it and it's a little bit easier to, uh, to access. So that's proved that the solenoid is working. So what's left really is just a handful of components on this board here. We have a thousand microfarad 6.3 volt capacitor and you know these do dry up they can go faulty there's also a transistor on there it's a 2sc2655 and there's a diode and a resistor but what i would probably do to eliminate all any problems with this is i would probably when the camera is fully assembled so you may want to do this before you take everything apart um, is to check to see if you get six volts or a voltage or a pulse coming uh, to the orange and green wire here. So you, could, you can connect a voltmeter up here and you can release the shutter and you can see if you're gonna get a, see if you can get a voltage here because this will come from the processor and this will come via this uh, ribbon flex circuit cable here through these, through these uh, terminals here. And it will connect to this board here which will then send a pulse. And you know, if, it is, if you're getting something then it should go down through these wires, which connect to this small board here, and it should activate the solenoid. Now we know the solenoid's working, and if we're getting a pulse here, we know our problem is between this point here and the solenoid. And the only thing is, in that path, is some wires which can corrode, they can perish. You may need to replace the wiring up to this board, or uh, you're gonna need to replace the capacitor the transistor, the diode, and the, 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 the resistor. The likely culprit here is the capacitor.